Hello, my brothers and sisters in the Philippines. My name is Delano Stewart, and I bring greetings from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we love you guys, and we are excited uh, to be able to be in a partnership with you in the gospel. Um, I just want to thank all the brothers and sisters there in the Philippines. Thank you, Ariel and Susan, for all your love and hospitality that you show to us when we from Vegas go out to encourage the church there. We always leave more encouraged uh, than we uh, believe that we've encouraged you. And so uh, on behalf of the Las Vegas family, Valley Christian, we uh, extend our greetings, we extend our love, and we extend our thanks. And this morning, I just wanted to um, really encourage the brothers and sisters. We know that there is a pandemic going on. We know that all of us have been affected. Uh, every church, I don't think there's been one person on this planet that hasn't been affected uh, in one way or another by this pandemic. But it's been so encouraging to hear how God has moved uh, in the Philippine churches and through our brothers and sisters there. As many of you know, I'm half Elicano, uh, and so I share a special connection with all my brothers and sisters there. So grateful for the opportunity to be able to uh, serve you in this way. Uh, Valley Christian here in Vegas, we, we love our brothers and sisters in the Philippines. And what I wanted to talk about this morning is being rooted in love. In Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 14, and we're going to read it in just a second, you know, one of the things I'm realizing, and as, as you guys know of all the unrest going on here in the United States, um, there is a lack of love and a need for love. And I'm sure that the message I'm going to preach and the message I'm going to speak to you is definitely a message that we need to hear and we need to imitate in our lives. And as a church here, as Valley Christian, we are doing our best to imitate this love and to be rooted in love in a time like this. But I believe that even in the Philippines during this time with so many people locked down, so many people in quarantine, um, there are so many needs. And what's going to really help the church to continue to grow and to continue to excel and to be different than the world, it's going to be how we love, how we love each other, how we love our, our, our neighbors, how we love those around us. And so in Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 14, it says, For this reason, and this is Paul talking to the church in Ephesus, after talking about how God has brought two people, Jews and Gentiles, as one man and one, one people under Jesus. He says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now this is a lot that Paul is praying about, and I'm just going to touch on one small aspect uh, for you today. And I wanted to touch, before I get to that one aspect, I wanted to touch on one thing, and that's the fact that we are all a family in Christ. That whether we're here in the States or in the Philippines or Myanmar or wherever we may be, we are one family. The Greek for father is pater and the Greek for family is patria. And that's where Paul says that every family uh, derives its name from God the Father. In John 13, verse 34 and 35, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, talk about how we are to love one another, to do good to one another. And the awesome thing is, though we're separated by distance, when we are loving each other, when we are loving our brothers and sisters, and we grow closer to God, we actually grow closer to each other as we grow closer to God. And so I want to encourage us, and that's why I'm talking about love, is because 
right now, many people have more time on their hands than they've had before. And this is a great time to uh, indulge in our relationship with God as we foster great relationships with each other. And I know you guys are on lockdown. I was uh, going back and forth with uh, Ariel, and he was talking about how uh, people do meetups at Costco or do meetups at different places. You know, they just happen to be in the same place so they can grab fellowship with each other, and that's awesome. And we got to fight for all the time that we can get with each other. But what's so incredible is as we draw closer to God, we actually draw closer to each other as a triangle demonstrates. But I just wanted to reiterate that, that we have brothers and sisters all over the world. And as we draw close to God, we are drawing close to each other in love. And so Paul had four parts to his prayer. That your inner man may be strengthened by the Spirit that Christ may dwell in your hearts and be rooted and grounded in love, to know and experience the enormity of God's love personally, and to be filled with the fullness of God. And so on your own, I would encourage you to really look at this passage of Scripture, dive into this passage of Scripture, and to see how much Paul wanted us to be in tune with God's love, how important that is as disciples. Because It's not just about doing. We are human beings. We are to be with God. We are to be in love with God. Yes, we're called to obey. Yes, we're called to do. Yes, we're called to go. But we will get tired of doing, tired of going. We will burn out if we aren't good at being in love with God. And I believe that's what Paul wanted in his prayer is for the the disciples in Ephesus to be in love, to be full of God's love that's demonstrated in Christ. So let's focus on this one part. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit. Now, why is this so important? Because in our human strength, we can't do enough to please God. If we in our normal human strength could live a life that's pleasing to God, we would do it. But we know in our normal human strength, we have a tendency to sin. Whether it be a tendency to be legalistic or a tendency to be lazy or a tendency just to go do our own thing, we know that in our flesh, it's always in a battle with God's Spirit. And so, Paul says that he prays that we can be strengthened with power through the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live a godly life. 2 Timothy chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 7, it says, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. I mean, I want you to think about what you were like before becoming a Christian, before being full of God's Holy Spirit. I know for myself, before I became a Christian, believe it or not, my probably greatest sin, aside from sexual immorality, was hatred. You say, well, who did you hate? I hated people. You're like, Delano, how can you hate people? Well, my philosophy was simple. I have issues. I have problems. People have problems. The more people that are involved in my life, the more problems that I have to deal with. So my solution was to try to isolate myself from people, to isolate myself from drama and from problems. And I was content with just being alone. But when I studied the Bible, I realized how much God loves me. And it made me realize how much I must love other people. And so when you talk about repentance, I went from hating people to loving people. I went from trying to avoid people to sharing my faith with, you know, as many people as I can. I went from wishing that I was alone to a fellowship, to fellowshipping all the time. And 
my wife laughs because she says God has a sense of humor that you would become a minister. Because a lot of my time is spent with people dealing with problems. But that's okay. You know why? Because I understand how much I am loved. I understand my issues. I understand my problems. And God loves me. And God wants to be with me. So why wouldn't I want to do that with other people? But he gives us power not to be timid. But he gives us the, the power to love and self-discipline. And, and here's what's really intense about that particular passage of Scripture is that's everybody. That's not just for the ministers. That's not just for the people that have a desire to go into the ministry. He says this Holy Spirit is there for everybody. All we have to do is tap into that power and to let God's Spirit rule and reign in our lives. Now, I love the Avenger movies. I really did. And because it made such great fodder for spiritual things. And so I look at us in our flesh like uh, Bruce Banner. Just weak, uh, scared, timid, not a lot of power. And I look at the Holy Spirit like the Hulk. I mean, just nothing but raw power. Maybe not angry, but powerful. And when we are in the flesh, we are timid. We, we walk around powerless. I mean, that's what it says in Romans, that while we were still powerless, Christ died for us. Powerless to fight against sin. Powerless to live a godly life. Powerless to deliver ourselves from our certain fate of hell. But when Christ came, He died, He rose again, He sent the Holy Spirit so that we would not be alone. He sent the Holy Spirit so that we can have the power to live that godly life. And so what I picture uh, us being like is like Smart Hulk, right? A combination of we retain our personality, we retain who we are, but we're now it revitalized with the power of the Holy Spirit. That we are given the power to do incredible things through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what I love about this for myself, and I could only speak for myself, is that I know I'm living by the power of the Holy Spirit when I'm loving people. When I sit down and, and study the Bible with people, when I sit down and I, I share my faith, or when I sit down and I, and I listen or empathize with a brother or sister who's hurting, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's not me. It's not my power. I can't take the glory. I can't take the praise. It's all God's Spirit. To Him be all the glory. You know, one of the things that we can do if we're not careful is think that it's all about us. Or to think that it's our talent or our power or our strength. That's when we're being set up for a fall. That's when we're set up to be discouraged or disappointed or disillusioned. When we think it's all about us. I know I am here only by the grace of God. I know who I am without the power of the Holy Spirit in me. I'm weak, I'm timid, I'm hateful, I'm unloving and unkind and uncaring. What are you like? When you're not full of the Holy Spirit, what are you like? We've got to know so that we know when the Spirit is operating in our lives and we know when it's us operating in our lives. See, I believe that the Spirit wants to transform every part of our lives. Now, what does this mean? He says, he says be strengthened through the Holy Spirit in your inner being. Not just our behavior, but in our inner being. And there's two passages of Scripture that uh, I want to look at briefly. Uh, the first is Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, and, and I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it. It talks about going through our struggles. And he says that um, 
in verse 3, not only so, but we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God wants to transform us. Not just our behavior, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but he wants to transform who we are foundationally inside, that, the, the part that no one sees. You see, we can really be good at performing, and that means when people are around, when people see us doing the right thing, making sure we're saying the right thing, hey, bro, hey, sis, you know, we're happy, we're joyful, but then we get behind closed doors. We get out of the view of people, but we're still in the view of God. What are we like? You know, many of you have been at home locked with your wife or locked with your husband or locked in with your children or your family. What's it been like for you? Have you really relied on the Holy Spirit to be loving I know here in the United States, and I don't know how it is in the Philippines, but domestic violence, on the increase. People who are fighting each other, on the increase. Suicides, on the increase. Children being abused, on the increase. Why? Because people are locked away behind closed doors where people can't see them. And their behavior, their inner man, hasn't been changed and God wants to strengthen us and to change us in our inner man in Romans chapter 8 it talks about life through the spirit versus life through the flesh and there's two very different ways that we are to live it says that the the sinful mind cannot submit to God cannot please God and yet the spirit pleases God it lives according to the word word In verse 5, it says, Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires, but those who live according with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. How's your peace? Is your mind guarded from the junk that the world wants to put on you? And I know it's been tough. I know it's been hard. I know for many of you, you're in a situation, if you don't work, you don't get paid. Is there still peace? I was so encouraged to hear how the church has rallied to meet the needs of those who have been impacted by the pandemic. It warmed my heart. And and it's so encouraging. But see, God wants through the Holy Spirit to do that to our inner being. He wants to meet that need. He wants to change us. He wants to transform us. But we must be willing to surrender to the Spirit. And here's what I mean. Behavior is a thing when we become disciples is really one of the first things to change. Is we start living differently. We start doing things differently. But for those of us who are more mature in the faith, we realize that that's only a very small part of who we really are. There's so much beneath the surface. You know, it's said that when we see an iceberg, and I know in the Philippines you don't have many icebergs in the Philippines, but you can use your imagination, that we only see 10% of an iceberg and 90% lies under the water of what we don't see. See, Paul understood that, yes, our behavior can change, but God wants to change our inner being, who we are in our core. He wants to change our sorrow. He wants to change our regrets. He wants to change how we view our history, our disappointment, our emotions, our hurt, our fears. He wants the Holy Spirit to get in there and to change those things things to transform those things i think too often the reason why we can struggle spiritually is we don't allow the holy spirit to get that deep 
We don't allow the Spirit to deal with the hurts and the disappointments that we experience. Even in the church, the hurts and the disappointments we might experience in the church. Oh, I can't believe you treated me that way. I can't believe you said that. And we get all bent out of shape and we leave. Because we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to change who we are to extend grace, to extend mercy, to extend forgiveness, and to understand we are all broken. We all need help. And we all need to live by the Spirit. And so I want to ask you that question. Does the Holy Spirit have permission in your life to change your inner man? Oh, the Holy Spirit can do whatever He wants. No, 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 no. See, you're going through, you may be going through a trial right now. And this might be a trial that you've gone through before. And before. And before. And you keep trying to figure out what does God want from me? He wants to transform you from the inside out. See, we'll change our behavior and say, oh, okay, I'm good. God's like, no. Oh, well, I don't do this anymore, so that, means, that must mean I'm good. Does it? See, the Holy Spirit, what I love about the Holy Spirit is He's got time. He's got time to wait for permission to work on your inner being. But we have to literally surrender to Him. Surrender our sorrows, our hurts, and our regrets. We've got to be willing to allow Him to dig down deep. To transform us. So that our character and our perseverance and our hope, they're not surfacy, but they're deep. And I, and I know we all feel things very deeply. But in our people-pleasing nature, and our people-pleasing way, we, we just don't want to cause trouble. When all inside, there's all sorts of turmoil, there are all sorts of trouble. We've got to give the Holy Spirit permission to deal with the inside so that we can become more and more and more like Christ. What does Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 8 say? Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 20, um, 28 and 29, it says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to His purpose because those who God called, He foreknew to be transformed into the likeness of His Son. The Holy Spirit wants to transform us into the image of Jesus. See, when you dug down deep into Jesus' character, into his psyche, into his personality, you still found Jesus. And I think it's the same with us. When we dig down deep and we, we get beyond the surface and that, that God still wants to see Jesus in us. You know, you talk about being the light. It's not just a light on the surface. It's a, it's a light that emanates from deep down inside from the light of Jesus, the light of the Holy Spirit. And here's what's really cool is when I said he has time, he also has unlimited resources. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. It's not about going and getting something. See, a lot of times when we think about our Christianity, when we think about growing, when we think about maturing, when we think about uh, becoming more like Jesus, we think, I've got to go get a book, or I've got to go get some discipling, or I've got to go get this, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. And the Bible says, oh, no, 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 he's given you everything. No, those things are helpful. Those things are encouraging. But he says, I've given you everything that you need. Because I've given you the Holy Spirit. I've given you the gospel. Now, it's not to say we, don't, we, we can't benefit from those other things. But how much time do you spend with God 
thinking about all the things that He has given to us already through the power of the Holy Spirit and having that fellowship with the Spirit, having that fellowship with God. I know a lot of people don't talk this way, but we, we have to get to a point to where we are one with the Spirit. And that takes work. It takes intention. It takes purpose. Because if we run and, and save the world, but we're not close to God. Have, how many times has this ever happened where someone goes out and they study the Bible with someone, they're, 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 they're very fruitful in that way, and then they leave God? You're like, what happened? Because we spend so much time on the external. We don't deal with the internal. But here's what it says. It says He's given us everything. He says, through His glorious riches, may He transform your inner man. Too often we live in this mindset of scarcity. And what I mean by that is we live in this mindset that God gives us just enough. When we go to Him, we're like, God, give us what we need. Give us what we need. And God's like saying, I, I've given you more than what you need. I've given you abundance, abundant love, abundant power, abundant grace, abundant spirituality. God does not operate from scarcity. He operates from abundance. And I think as Christians, we go around looking for scraps when there's a feast before us. And that's when, when I think about my relationship with God, it's, it's not just, I, I don't know how to put it, but it's, it's, it's almost like going to a banquet. When I think about my relationship with God, it, it's, it's, it's going to a banquet and saying, man, there's so much to God. I, I, my stomach's not even big enough to, to eat everything that I want to eat. I know when I've been to the Philippines, it's like every meal, it's like a, a feast. That's what it's like in our relationship with God. At least that's what it should be like in our relationship with God. There's no excuse for any of us to ever feel like there's not enough. When you feel or if you feel like, man, there's just not enough or if you feel like, man, I feel like God is so far or I feel like I don't feel like I'm close to God. It seems like God is, is so distant. I want to challenge you. Stop what you're doing. Set aside two hours, three hours, four hours. Set aside a day and spend time with God. Just take your Bible maybe a journal, and go spend time with God. Cry out to Him. Call out to Him. Oh, I know He'll answer. Why? Because He loves you. And He cares for you. You know, if, if we're not spending enough time with God, it's, it's not because God doesn't have time. It's because we don't. And we've got to be willing to spend time with him. And I want to close with this. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And this kind of gives the uh, impression that the, the Spirit is marching. He's going. He's going. And we've got to try to keep in step with him. 7,000, over 7,000 islands, 30-some churches, Oh, man, there's a lot of work to do. And I love the, the plan of, of like organically planting churches. Awesome. What a concept. Hey, if there are three disciples there, we're going to plant the church there. If there's five disciples, we're going to plant the church there. How awesome is that? To me, that is so biblical. John chapter 3, Jesus says, hey, you don't know where the Spirit's going to move. You don't know where it goes, where it's coming from. I want to I give the encouragement to be so full of the Spirit 
that when he calls you to go, you hear the call to go. Oh, bro, church planting, that's for someone else. Oh, bro, that's, that's for other people. Why not for you? You don't think the Spirit is marching out to those different islands? He absolutely is. And he's looking for a marching buddy. But that marching buddy has to be led by the Spirit. That marching buddy has to be full of the Spirit, has to live by the Spirit. That marching buddy has to take time to get to know the Spirit. And again, I just pray that you could be encouraged to know that how much God loves you. He loves you so much that He says, I'm going to give a part of myself to you. And that love needs to motivate us, needs to spur us on to get deeper in our relationship with Him. I want to speak to the young Christians out there. Um, whether you be campus or teens, learn this lesson. It's not all about rah, rah, going out and doing, doing, doing. Those are good things. Get solid in your relationship with God. Walk in the presence of God. So that when tough times come, you always have that power, that self-discipline, and that love to carry you through even the darkest times. Learn now to, to surrender to the Spirit, to transform your inner self. See, we old guys, man, we have a lot of issues. But when you're young, you don't have as many issues. And you let the Holy Spirit transform you and work on you now. And you get in that practice of being transformed from the inside out. When you get older, you won't forget how to let the Spirit move. And now let me speak to some of the older Christians. Hey, your best years are still ahead of you. I know sometimes we think church planting or church growing or church going is a young man's sport. It doesn't have to be. It's a spirit sport. Be led by the Spirit. Be transformed on the inside. Grab hold of the power of the Holy Spirit. And if the Spirit calls you, see, that's, a, that's the other thing about being an older Christian. We have more resources usually. Let the Spirit use you. Let the Spirit move you. Listen to the Spirit. March with the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. Because I know He wants to do even greater things things we are so inspired to hear what God is doing there but we know that God wants to do even more you know God wants to do even more you're listening to this and your heart is beating your palms are sweaty and you're like man I feel the spirit listen to him follow him that you may be strengthened in your inner man through the power and his glorious riches that the spirit has Thank you so much for all that you guys are doing. Thank you so much for your example. And I love you. We love you. And I'm going to try this. Maha Namin Kayong Lahat. And that's not just from me. That's from all of Valley Christian. We love you. Amen. And God bless.